everyone. Welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And today we're talking about Six Ways to Write a Love Letter by Jackson Pierce. I got this um, from Edelweiss. I think I got it from Nick Ellie. Okay. So this is about Remy, who is an uh, independent, an indie art artist. Um, well, he was like a washed up one hit wonder. Y- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. He was a washed up one hit wonder. Um, his brother got deep into drugs and so that really kind of tanked their their band's career um so now they're kind of now the bro his twin brother is doing better like um you know in recovery and they're trying to kind of write songs and get back to where they were um meanwhile Remy kind of wants to be a producer and has taken um gigs you know to pay the rent and he actually gets tapped by Vivi Swan's team. Vivi is kind of this world's almost conglomeration of like your Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Britney Spears. Type. Oh, see, I thought she was totally Taylor Swift. Like, yeah, I didn't think it was subtle. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so he gets tapped to be um, her her drummer for the her worldwide tour um because her drummer actually got into an accident and broke his elbows you know because that happens um and so he joins the tour and he it's going to be great for his career um and he starts having feelings for this pop idol but you know there's a lot of barriers in their way and I think that's really all you need to know yeah so the Taylor Swift thing because like she was a tall willowy blonde who started oh, out? It was a lot of Taylor Swift, yes. Like started out in country music, transitioned to pop. Her father was like a dentist, and I think Taylor Swift, one of her parents, like works it out, like is an administrator in a hospital. Like it, it was like it to me, it wasn't even subtle. Like I didn't see anybody else. Yeah, there was a little bit of Katy Perry mixed in. Like there was a little bit of other like pop idols i mean like the show kind of sounded like a carrie perry show like with the with like the way it was set up and the costume changes like yeah that felt kind of katie perry-ish so we had very different reactions to this book i i found it amusing sarah did not i didn't like it i don't like her i don't like vivi swan i do not like her she was like an object and i think i would have liked her better if so this was all told from remy's perspective which was interesting and unique and new but I didn't get to know Vivi, and so I didn't like her. And I think it would have worked better if there were alternating perspectives. And I will admit, I originally thought it was going to be alternative perspectives, and I probably would have liked that better. So, and I was telling Sarah, to me, this felt very much, and I'm not that much older than you, but it felt very much like when I was like in high school and college, you used to get these made for TV movies. And <laughs> there was one um, that had, it was called, I think it was called, I want to marry Ryan Banks. And it had Bradley Cooper was the producer on this TV show. And Jason Priestley was this washed out star. And all the women came to the house to want to marry Ryan Banks. But if one of them falls in love with Bradley Cooper. And then there was another one with Chris Carpenter. It was like called CJ and date. And it was like, she's trying to get a date for a wedding. It felt to me like one of those, like there was the one with, um, Kimberly, what was her name for father of the bride? And she had like the list that she was supposed to follow that her mom had made she fell in love with Patrick Dempsey and he didn't fall on the list, like wasn't part of the timeline. <laughs> so to me, it felt like that. It felt very formulaic. And so like, I liked it. Like I sat and read like two thirds of it, like one sitting yesterday. Um, because it was like, you knew what was going to happen. Like you knew exactly. And I was okay with that. And maybe it's because I used to watch stuff like that because I even like reading it, particularly like how it ends, like the big like declaration and like the connection. I'm like, this is so should be a movie on Lifetime. I wouldn't watch it. I would totally watch it. I wouldn't watch it because I don't like Vivi. Like I just like the more I had to read about her, the more I was just like, oh, yeah. But that's like the thing in those like like it's like Notting Hill. Like you never really get to know Anna Scott. You only see Anna through Will. So, and like, I said, and like, I don't know. It's, it's very formulaic. It's very basic, but to me, it did what it was supposed to do. I don't know. It didn't work for me. I think we should just write it. Okay. Our rating skill goes from five unicorns down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it doesn't get a horn and is therefore a horse. Where are you? I'm at a three. Like it was cute. It to me, it moved fast. Like there, it did what it was supposed to do. 
I'm in a two. It did do what it was supposed to do. I, I mean, it read fast. It was a romance. I just didn't like the character. And I think that might be a personal problem. I don't know. <laughs> because, like, in those kinds of, those, like, fall in love with a rock star or fall in love with a movie star, you, they're always, like, unreachable. And I mean, and it is like, it is Notting Hill's a perfect example. Like you, you very, like you get, like you did with this, where you get like these two little, three little moments where like they have a monologue and that's all you know about the character. I didn't, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me. So that's where we are with six ways to write a love letter by Jackson Pierce. See you around. <laughs> Bye. Bye.